Hi, my name is Jeff Parker. I'm a professor of engineering at Dartmouth College, and I'm also a research fellow at the MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy. I'm going to talk today about how platforms are changing the world in which we live and what some of the implications are for firms and the strategies that they implement in order to adapt to this changing world. So to begin with, if we're going to talk about platforms, we need to think about how traditional industry has been organized for time immemorial. The way we've gone to market has been through a linear value chain process where we source raw materials or potentially content. We then produce modules, edit and curate in a content context, and then assemble or create bundles and get a finished product or service out to market. It's a very linear value addition. Once an end customer pays you, you compensate everybody back up the chain. In a platform context, this gets reorganized. The way that value gets created is you have more loosely affiliated sets of actors on the producer side who can then use platform resources to create and exchange elements of value with consumers who also affiliate with the platform. This allows for the platform firm to harness the capabilities of external actors and then share in their revenue and their value creation, allowing for dramatic growth opportunities. To convince you that platforms are having a profound impact on the economy, let's take the example of two of the world's largest retailers, Amazon and Walmart. At a high level, they might appear to be very similar. They have global reach and enormous revenues. However, as everyone knows, one of them operates online and one of them operates primarily through a physical distribution channel. However, the differences go far beyond that. To convince you of this, we have some data that maps the addressable APIs that are out there on the web. If you map those APIs, you can then look at all the different places where Amazon has opened up its infrastructure to allow others to participate in its ecosystems. And they're across the board. Now let's take a look at Walmart's API strategy. As you can see, they're at the very beginning of their journey, even though they have many of the same assets in terms of logistics, the ability to track data, and to optimize flows. However, from the perspective of a platform, they're very much at the beginning. It's also instructive to look at the different regions of the world. If you look at North America, they tend to dominate largely because they have unified markets, common languages, common currencies. Asia is catching up very quickly and has seen organizations such as Tencent, Baidu, and Alibaba growing very quickly. Europe, on the other hand, for a variety of reasons, has lagged. Even though the traditional economy is very comparable to North America, in the platform economy, Europe is at the beginning of the journey. There are many who would say, well, aren't these platforms just artifacts of venture capital investment, leveraging the fact that investors are willing to sink enormous amounts of capital without ever seeing a return? That might once have been true, but if you look at the top 50 publicly traded platforms over the last five years, they've accumulated more than a trillion dollars of profit. So clearly these organizations, once they mature, become incredibly powerful profit generating machines. And you might have heard of the downturn in China. And of course it's true in traditional sectors. However, if you take a look at the platform firms, you see accelerating growth, not slowing. Many of you have been trained in corporate strategy and are no doubt familiar with Porter's Five Forces. And for good reason. It's been the dominant model to guide strategic thinking for several decades. 
it's provided a powerful lens through which to analyze markets and optimize supply chains. However, platform strategy differs because the goal is to foster interactions that then yield positive network effects. Network effects are the fuel that drive the value of platforms. That's because the more people who come, the more valuable the system becomes, which creates a positive feedback loop that over time makes for either winner-take-all or winner-take-most market outcomes. Boundaries can be altered. One day a buyer can become a supplier or suppliers can become buyers. They also alter because adjacent platforms that you might think at one level as a competitor can host upon your platform and then become one of your complementers, adding value to your system. This is an outcome we often see where platforms nest on top of one another. Finally, the competition is multi-layered. It's platform to platform, buyer to supplier, supplier to supplier, and the net effect is that competition analysis becomes more like thinking about how to play 3D chess. You've got to be looking in unexpected places for the emergence of potential entrants. Taken together, what does all of this imply for capabilities that firms need to develop? Well, one is that firms need to take a hard look at their data assets. In a platform world, that's one of the most valuable things the firm commands. In a world of strong network effects, the data layer becomes critical because you're able to learn about customer or user behavior in one segment and then leverage that information to develop new products and services or create better matches in other sectors, thereby creating value for end customers. So what's the implication? Firms need to first catalog and then synthesize their data across all of their different business units and then create an API strategy so that it's possible to get access to that data again to create new products. Then you have to think about where the value creation is occurring. In platforms, value often gets created outside of the firm just as much as it gets created inside. And then platforms are able to participate through potential revenue sharing agreements. This suggests the necessity to develop new outward facing metrics. Third, one of the most critical capabilities that firms need to invest in is governance. This may seem counterintuitive, but if you think about the fact that network effects become critical generators of value, then firms need to monitor the network effects and take active steps to both promote positive network effects and screen out and remove bad actors who would create negative network effects that could destroy valuable brands. Finally, firms need to think carefully about what investing in all of these new capabilities means in terms of their ability to adapt their organizations to the future. Hello, I'm here with Professor Jeff Parker talking about platform business strategy. Jeff, can you just tell us about how applicable platform strategies are to traditional businesses? You know, it's a great question. And what's happening is platforms are starting to impact businesses across all kinds of different sectors. But of course, the rate at which those impacts are happening differ for a lot of reasons the information intensity of the products and services they deliver, or the asset intensity of the production processes, such as oil and gas, or power, that are required to bring those services to market. But everybody is getting impacted. So, so is it relevant for all the clients at Bearing Point, would you say? I would say so. Um, and honestly, everybody's going to have to have a platform strategy, either to implement their own platform or to figure out how to adapt to those that are entering their markets. Okay, great. And when you speak to executives at incumbent organizations, what's the biggest objection that you hear about 
creating a platform strategy? Well, honestly, the biggest objection is I've got a business to run. I mean, I'm busy, I've got a successful product or service, and honestly, those aren't things that I know how to do, and I don't have to today. And I always push back and I go, well, today, tomorrow, next week, eventually you're going to have to confront these realities, and you'd rather do it in a planned manner as opposed to getting disrupted from out of the blue. Um, you've spent quite a bit of time with us uh, with the telco industry recently. What's your reflections on that particular industry? So the telcos are in a tough place because they've been delivering profitable services. However, there's increasing pressure on their margins as those services are becoming commoditized. And yet they've been fueling this explosive growth in the platform economy. And so there's a certain frustration because they see all these other firms, such as Apple, Uber, Google, that depend critically on the network services and the mobility that those network services provide. So the challenge for the telcos is to figure out how to participate in the upside that the platform economy offers. Mm. How educated are execs getting on platform strategy, would you say, today? Uh, honestly, um, the quote, digital natives, it comes naturally, but most incumbent firms live in a porter supply chain world. And so thinking through, well, what does it mean to adopt a platform strategy? And what does it mean to start to coordinate actors that are outside of the firm who can create enormous value for the firm? That's new territory. Great. Well, the, I think with, with that in mind, I hope this has been stimulating. And we look forward to discussing it with everybody uh, over the next uh, few months and years. Thanks very much to Jeff.